This week on the podcast, I'm joined by Josh Longstaff. Josh is a Portland guy that I grew up playing basketball against. After he graduated college, he went on to coach for a number of different teams in the NBA, and he's now on the bench for the Chicago Bulls. So we had a great conversation about what that progression was like, how he got started, how his career has evolved. He aspires to be a head coach someday, and definitely talking to him, I get the impression that you know he's going to make that happen one way or another. So it's been awesome to see his success at the highest levels of basketball. He was always a really great player. And it sounds like he's a really, really good coach doing some awesome stuff. So I think you'll really enjoy this conversation. This is the Randy Forster podcast. As always, if you can do me a favor and subscribe. It's on Spotify, Apple, YouTube. Easy click of a button to uh, to subscribe. Also on Facebook and Instagram, if you'd follow, would really appreciate it. Thanks for the support. Thanks for listening. Here's Josh. Josh Longstaff, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thanks for having me, Randy. I really appreciate it. Yeah, man, I've been looking forward to talking to you. I was mentioning to you offline. I've been doing this for a little over a year. And the podcast has kind of evolved over that time. And I try to identify different people. That's like, you know, they're doing cool stuff. I would love to have a conversation with them about how they got to where they are. And I thought of you. I think back to when we first met. I don't know if you remember this, but it was at a Colby basketball camp up in Waterville. I I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, Pine Tree, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I went, I think a couple of years. Yeah, I, I remember it pretty vividly for sure. So I'm, I'm excited to hear all about your story. Happy for all the success that you had. So I figured we kind of just jump right into things if that works for you. Yeah, no, that's perfect. Let's do it. So you went to Portland High School, graduated in 2001. Obviously, basketball was a big part of your life growing up and then through high school. Basketball. Yeah, basketball and baseball. I love baseball growing up. Mm-hmm. I actually played a little bit in college. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you know, basketball is, you know, everything to me. Yeah. So when you graduated high school, where'd you go to college? I went to Bryant College at the time, Bryant University, turned into my senior year. And I was there for four years, basketball for four years, and then played baseball for a year or two. What position do you play in baseball? Pitch. That's what I thought. I was, I was always, you know, I loved shortstop, second base, and then I got to high school and my high school coach is like, you can't hit, so you're going to pitch. Yeah. You're pretty good at it, and let's just focus on that. I was like, great. So. I forgot that you were on that baseball team. I played baseball. I wasn't a huge baseball guy, but I became friends with J.D. Walker, and I just remember playing you guys at Hadlock Field, and those guys, yeah. him and was it Simon? Simon something. I forget his last name. Simon Williams. Yep. Yeah. Uh, those guys just did yeah. bombs. We watched batting practice and be like, oh, my God. Oh, uh-huh. that three, four, JD is a really good friend and, you know, Simon too. So it's, yeah, they were, those two guys were amazing. So I, I forgot you're on that team. So I always think of you just a basketball player. That's pretty cool that you're able to play both sports in college. What happened from college to where you are now? Like what happened after college? Yeah. So I actually, I moved home to Portland and, mm-hmm. you know, us main guys, like we were just homebodies. I loved it there. I wanted to be close to my parents, my family, my friends. I moved back. I actually got a job at a place called Applicators Sales and Service. So I sold building products to contractors. I'm familiar. And yeah, I tell <laughs> I tell NBA players all the time. I'm like, you guys are puppies compared to contractors. Okay. Yeah. So like I can deal with you guys all day long. So it, it was just really good experience for me to like, learn how to build relationships with people where like, I didn't know anything about doors, windows, roofing, like, I was selling myself every day yeah. and I, and I loved it. Like the, the company was great. The guy I worked for was great. Um, and I started helping out coach Russo at Portland high school. Cause my brother was a sophomore mm-hmm. and I would come by, you know, he'd have me over for practices. He wants to want to let me run a drill. I'd speak to the team. It was great. I like fell in love with it. And before I knew it, like I was getting up at, four in the morning to start my day earlier so I could make practice, you know, at three o'clock sometimes. And I coached there as an assistant for three years. And then I got a job at um, IDEX Mm -hmm. and the housing market was kind of dying. So I kind of jumped into a new position. And after my brother graduated from Portland, the athletic director at Gorham High School just asked me if I'd be interested in being the varsity head coach there. And I ended up doing it. I did it no for kidding. two years. Loved it. Like, I loved it. The kids were fantastic. The town, everything. It was great. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wish they had a better coach at the time, but I did the <laughs> best I could. Yeah. And 
And I was actually, it was after my second year, I went to Oklahoma City. A guy that was, he coached me in college. He was an assistant coach. His name was Brian Keefe. Yeah. was an assistant with Oklahoma City. And I said, hey, can I just come visit you for a week and pick up some stuff, see what I can learn? And when I was there, I spent a lot of time with the head coach, Scott Brooks, and with Sam Pratt, yeah. who who's the GM. And a year later, I got an email. I was sitting at my desk, my job, and they asked me if I'd be interested in like the lowest level position with the team. And uh, I flew out to Oklahoma City. I interviewed for three days and I got a text two days later from Sam Presti offering me the job. And I packed up my stuff, sold my house and I was gone. What a wild story that is. It's surreal. Yeah. <laughs> to, yeah, to think you're working applicator sales, IDEX, coaching high school basketball. And then next thing you know, getting a job offer from Sam Presti. Everyone knows Sam Presti who knows anything about basketball. So, yeah, I mean, he was for him to take a chance on me it was really he was a big big part of that and it was like hey look you're 27 Kevin Durant Russell Westbrook and James Harden are 21 and I'm just telling you like you're going to be wiping up their sweat you're going to be getting them Gatorade you're going to be mm -hmm. rebounding for them at all hours of the day you're not a coach like you're starting at the bottom and he's like I have reserves about you because you've been a head coach you know, a high school, whatever it is, you've been a head coach. And I had to really sell him on where I'm from and my background and my family and how I was raised. And he offered me the job and I did exactly what he said. I kept my mouth shut. I wiped up sweat. I guarded Russell every morning at 9 a.m. Like I did everything I could just to build trust and learn and grow and just kind of turned into this. So were you a an actual coach? at that moment or did your job title have a different name i was a basketball operations assistant yeah. so i was a jack of all trades master of none like literally and yeah. i was doing work for the front office i was doing work with the coaches i was out on the court guarding rebounding i would i would be there at 5 a.m and i would leave at midnight and yeah. i just i felt like just if you're around you fall into things. People ask you to do things. Hey, like you get involved in things that maybe you shouldn't. And mm -hmm. that was my mindset. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of where I was at. But I didn't speak. I didn't coach anybody. Like I didn't, I don't want to sit here and say I made Kevin Russell and James Hart who they yeah. were. <laughs> yeah. You, like they, they, you they made contribute. me. Yeah. 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 So. How much did the fact that you play basketball in college play a role in this you know the fact that you could be on the court with these guys it's was that part of it or or the fact that you were young or just you just sold yourself and you came across as a person that was passionate about the game and had something to bring to the table right? yeah no I it definitely helped because you know when you're out there with these guys and like there's a coach putting you know Kevin Durant through a workout and I need to guard him like you need to know how to guard him to get him to do what the coach is trying to get him to do so I yeah. think there's a feel to that that's hard to teach unless you played. And then also like I could move and I could play. Um, mm -hmm. The players respect that. It gets me on the floor in different situations. It gets me involved. And then, you know, even now when I'm working out a player and I'm out there and I'm, you know, I can dribble and pass. Like you, you can just tell, like I look like I played. Yeah. And I think that all plays a part. Yeah. So after college, going back to Maine, and it sounds like you stumbled into even coaching in general. Like maybe you knew you wanted to play basketball still, maybe recreationally, but you, did you, is it fair to say you stumbled into coaching in Portland and it kind of led to everything that happened afterwards? Or did you at some point say, I know I want to make basketball part of my life somehow long-term. Like when did things transition from, I'm just going to be a guy that lives in Maine, has a family, has a job. to like, I'm going to coach in the NBA. Just that one visit. Yeah. You know, it's, I, I did stumble into it, I will say, because my college coach asked me if I wanted to stay and be a coach. He's like, hey, mm -hmm. we get one grad assistant spot, go to grad school, pay for it. I think you'd be a good coach, whatever. And I chose not to just because, you know, I did. I wanted to go home. I wanted to get a job that, you know, paid good money and it was consistent and, mm -hmm. you know, you can stay there for a long time. You know, it's just a different life. and. 
you know, I love Portland, Maine, like super passionate about that place and how I grew up and my friends and family. And to be honest, like you never grow up saying like, Hey, I want to be a coach. Like I wanted to play in the NBA, you know, like I'm sitting here and it's a little surreal. Like you can't see in my office, but I have some things like I grew up as a kid with my dad, like we'd cut out all his sports illustrated and make a collage. And I've got like Michael Jordan stuff, like, and wow. he, he actually, he found one of them we made when I was eight years old. He framed it and I have it here in my office just to remind me of like, you always wanted to be here and, and yeah. I wanted to be a player, but coach is the next best thing. So, Definitely. so yeah, when I went to Portland, it was like, I was passionate about helping the Bulldogs and my brother and coach Russo. And I just like fell in love with it. And I still, I never went to Oklahoma City saying like, hey, I, I, I got to go here and get a job because I mm-hmm. was like, you know, I'm, I'm at home and I own a house and I've got a good job. And when I got offered, you know, I told my parents and, and you know, naturally they care about their son. They're like, well, you got this great job and you've got, you really want to leave for a job that's going to pay you, you know, $15,000 a year and you know, you don't know what's next. I'm not under a contract or anything. And I just, them without even realizing it, they always taught me, you got to take risks, believe in yourself and go after Mm -hmm. what you want. And that's, that's what I did. Yeah. How long did you spend out in Oklahoma city? I was there for four years. Yep. Worked your way up a little bit in your, in your time there. Yeah, like they do a really good job, obviously, developing players. You see so many players that young players that develop into stars there, but they also do a good job developing their staff. And, you know, for me, they gave me a little bit more every year. I think the first year is really the test there. Like, you know, does this guy have it? Uh, Uh And I think I at least passed that. So, like, they started giving me a little bit more. by my last year, I had my own player I was responsible for. You know, I was traveling full time. Like we've had a lot of success there. And mm-hmm. yeah, they just kind of treat you a little bit different every year. So they, they do a tremendous job there. Is that how it works in the NBA where a coach will be assigned to a specific player? I've seen, I've seen both actually. You know, I've been a part of five teams now. So you mm-hmm. kind of learn different things. And I, the way I'd always learned was all the assistants are assigned to like two or three players. And yeah. those are the players you work with every day. You watch film with every day. You kind of really build a close relationship with until I got to Atlanta. I was a G league head coach there and uh, they did it different. They rotated their staff would rotate with mm-hmm. players. And, you know, so it just, just depends where you're at. But. Yeah. So you left Oklahoma city and was there a stop between then and when you were head coach in the G league? Yeah, so I went from Oklahoma City to the Knicks, and that's where I got out of the video room and became Mm -hmm. an assistant coach, and I like high focus on player development. How long were you there for? Three years. Okay. Uh, Derek Fisher was a player in Oklahoma City, and he, it's funny, I, I know I mentioned it before, but I would just be there late at night, and he would come in and shoot every night at 10 o'clock. And I was the only one left. So I would rebound for him. And then we just built this relationship. And he's like, you know, he's 38 at the time. And it's like talking to a grown man, like we've got a bunch of young kids on the team, which, you know, they're great. But he was like the the elder statesman. Absolutely. So we would talk forever, you know, sometimes for hours at night. And then he got the next job and he called Sam and I said, you know, I want to take Josh as an assistant. And, you know, Sam is very like keen on keeping his people and it's a mm-hmm. great place to work. And mm-hmm. just kind of, we came to the agreement like, Hey, you know, like you got to go. You, if you coach, you got to go. And so he was supportive Jackson, of just, Yeah, he was, he was awesome through the whole thing. He's very honest. And if he thinks it's wouldn't be the best thing for me, like he would mm-hmm. give me his opinion and then yep. you make your decision. But he told me like, Hey, it's hard to get out of that room and to become an assistant coach and you know, Phil Jackson and just become the president there. So it's like, you're going to be learning a ton mm-hmm. and you're going to see like it's wild. Called the, the real NBA. It's like, we're going from the smallest market to the biggest yeah. market. And we've yeah. got the 
the best high character players you could imagine in Oklahoma City. It's like now you're going to go coach some real dudes and we'll see what you got. And so, what years were that? It was 2014, 15 through 16, 17. As a coach at Oklahoma City, were you on the bench for the games? Yeah, I was on the behind the bench in New York. Mm-hmm. Oklahoma City, like, I would run out to, like, grab, like, some notes, you know, for film at halftime. But, yeah, I was behind the bench in New York, and, you know, it's the garden, and it was just, like, a whole new world for me. There's, like, you could sit back in the video room and be like, man, like, you know, coach should have done this, or this guy should, and then you're back there, and it's like, wait a minute, I don't know as much as I thought I knew. So. I bet. Did your parents go to your first game coaching in Madison Square Garden? Or- yeah, I want to say they went to at least one of the first. My brother was there. So he came to the first game. My parents maybe came shortly after that. Yeah. That's a big deal. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's yeah, like it a fulfilled dream. And to, I mean, you start throwing Phil Jackson's name around. I forget his involvement in the Knicks at the time. So to, to be you know, good friends with Derek Fisher and working under Phil Jackson, it's just pretty cool. And, and in New York City, you know, so. Yeah, um, it was tremendous experience so you worked hard over there build relationships deepen relationships and you had an opportunity to be a head coach in the g league that was the next yes. step yeah so my my contract ran out in new york it had a new coach jeff hornis that could take it over i worked with him for a year he was great really treated me really well even though you mm-hmm. know i wasn't one of his guys technically mm-hmm. and then after that you know like i got the opinion of some people that i'm really close with in the league and some mentors and they just asked me like, well, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to be an NBA head coach. And I said, okay, well, you need to go do it. Like you need mm-hmm. to go be a head coach. So people look at you in yeah. that light. And the G league is, I mean, the team is there in Maine and it's tremendous. It's the closest thing to the NBA. The jobs are hard to get. So if someone said, why would you want to go keep being a behind the bench assistant if this is what you really want to do? So I pursued a few of the jobs and I was fortunate enough to get one. Atlanta didn't have a team and they had just bought the Erie Bayhawks. It was going to be an expansion team. And Mike Budenholzer and Malik Rose, former player, was the GM of the team. And they took a chance on me and I went to be a head coach for a year. So how'd how'd your season go? Was it different than you thought or did it all go well? No, it was great. No, it was not as... You know, I never thought it'd be easy, but, you know, yeah. you're like, oh, I can do that. Yeah. And then the first month, your head spinning, and we were, I don't know, 4-14 four and 14 mm-hmm. and lost a ton of close games. And to be honest, like, I thought we had a really good culture going and a good environment, but the coaching played into it. Like, my assistants were great, but there's, you know, I made a ton of mistakes. And I think one thing I learned in – when I made those mistakes and you're sitting in front of the team the next day and you're watching film, it's a big way of how you get better in the NBA pro sports in general is admitting my mistakes and saying, listen, you got to be better here, but like, I got to be better and I will be. And we turned it around and we ended up going to the Eastern conference finals. We were the first uh, expansion team to make the playoffs and uh, kind of a funny, just quick side story. In the uh, first game of the year, I want to say, we played Toronto's G League team and Jerry mm-hmm. Stackhouse is the head coach. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I wanted to, I was, again, like I was a Michael Jordan nut. So I wanted to go to North Carolina when I was a kid. Yeah. Yeah. And so watching Jerry Stackhouse, like, you know, and so they beat us by like 50. And I mean, they just absolutely crushed us. And, you know, he's got these like, expensive suits like he is like you know well put together and just absolutely kicked our ass and my ass as a coach and we played them in the eastern conference finals so pre-game our players are warming up and we both go out there and it's just kind of like a thing we're sitting there watching our guys and he's like hey man i gotta tell you there is no way I thought we'd be playing you guys. And to me, that was like, a, yeah. And it was like a cool, like, okay, it's Jerry Stackhouse and he's a very confident guy, but also a little bit of his way of giving a compliment. So it was cool. They, they beat us in a close game, but it's great. What a wild thing to just say like, oh yeah, me and Jerry Stackhouse were talking at center court, watching our guys <laughs> and like, just like, yeah. what? what a crazy, crazy thing to say, especially when you think back to, like you said, you know, going to UNC back in the day and just like, wow, to, to see your career at that point must be a pretty cool moment. 
one year obviously yeah it was great yeah i mean yeah. i really wish we could have won the game but that whole year and experience was amazing for me you guys played them a lot better that game though yeah they beat us by four i'd like to say i can't remember but i still do you know i i think that experience and being in the g league and in a small town and the way you travel and how much time you spend with each other mm-hmm. to see like players and staff members really grow and myself grow it was a really really cool experience and probably one of the best i've had as a as a professional did you know it was always going to be one year thing or were you in no no you know like i i went into it and i wanted to attack and i wanted to do great you know mm-hmm. and fortunately for me coach budenholzer is very competitive he wanted his g league team to be good he was very supportive and was close with me and cared about it and and pushed me in in a lot of ways so you know i think that had something to do with it but i was just trying to hey i want to get better at this every day see where it takes me see where it takes the team and the staff and then it happened that after the season Coach Bud left and got the Milwaukee job. I went and did USA basketball with Jeff Van Gundy. He was there. Really the, no kidding. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It was like a, a summer thing. It was a uh, world cup qualifiers. Yep. So it was, you know, you're playing these games. You basically have to win in order for the, the big USA team to qualify for the Olympics. So it's a big deal. I is it not the rules. regular guys on that team or is it a, Less the no, smaller. Uh, you can't have NBA guys, so it's okay. all G League guys. Um, mm-hmm. Jeff was the head coach, and he, you know, he asked me to be an assistant. It was myself and John Thompson the third, mm-hmm. and uh, Mark Fox, who was a college head coach. And yeah, we played two games, and one in uh, Mexico City, and one in Cuba. And no I went to do that. I came back, and Coach Bud offered me a job in Milwaukee, mm-hmm. and. And I took it. No kidding. What a, it sounds like you're building your resume, though. I mean, as you go, a little head coaching experience, USA basketball experience, obviously the NBA experience. And now you're back in the NBA in Milwaukee. What was that run like? Obviously, one of the best players in the world on your team. You're very yeah. competitive. Yeah. Was yeah, that experience no, was... way different than the other, other experiences? Or It was because I think, you know, becoming an assistant in New York and for everything New York was like, we didn't win. And it bothered me because, you know, it's like any sport. They say you win in New York. It's there's nothing like it, which is true because we were all-star break. My second year, we were like in seventh in the East and it was like bananas in there every (laughs) night. And I'm like, we're in seventh. I'm coming from Oklahoma city where we went to the finals and like, you know, so in Milwaukee, it was much, you know, low key, much more low key. And we just kind of like snuck in there. And we were ended up being like the one seed, I think, my first year. And, mm-hmm. you know, Coach Bud got coach of the year. We coached the all star game. Like it was a heck of a year. Unbelievable yep. experience. Well, I want to ask you about that all star game. That must have been unbelievable. Yeah, it was amazing. I mean, just so was, was that when it was, career. was it Team LeBron and Team Giannis? Was it that structure when you were coaching or was it like an East yes. and West thing still? Were you guys obviously coaching Team Giannis, right? Coaching Team Giannis. Our guest player, I don't know if you remember that year, it was Dirk. Okay. So Dwayne Wade and Dirk were like the honorary all-stars. They were they're in there like, last year and they just got him in there. Yeah. Yeah. They kind of like, you know, honorary all-stars. And that was cool. Just, you know, picking his brain. Guys been obviously around forever and championship and everything. So, um, but yeah, incredible experience. Just it's yeah. super low key. And Steph Curry played on our team. He's from Charlotte. So like Coach Bud addresses the team and he says, like, okay, I'm gonna do my best to play the guys that have been here and your first time all stars, you might not play as much. And mm-hmm. he's like, I'm just telling everybody though, Steph, you can play as much as you want. Yeah. And it was just like a cool, like everyone loves the guy. So how different is it though in that all-star moment those guys receptive to just even being around you or do you have any type of relationship as an opposing assistant coach right or i can't imagine you would but maybe you do like do you know these guys that aren't on your team on any Uh, level so so like russell westbrook was playing i had seen you know seen him in years he was on our team i'd known maybe a 
I'm trying to think. Like Durant was on the team, obviously not on our team, but some guys from being around, like you just get to know different guys. So this is coach. your opportunity to actually meet and know better than the best guys in the league. Yeah, and like you get to talk and like they're not going to remember my name, but then Mm -hmm. like Steph Curry and I had a mutual friend. So like we talked about that for a while. Bryant Barr, he played with him at Davidson as the main guy. Oh, no kidding. And yeah, so we kind of connected on that. And then so now when I see him, there's like a, hey, how you doing? Like, you know, dap me up type thing. But he doesn't remember my name. Yeah, yeah, probably. Still but, cool though. Yeah, still very cool. Yeah, it was cool. Like, yeah, yeah we could Vucevic was on that team. So like mm-hmm. when he got traded here, he kind of looked at me like, Don't I know you from somewhere? And so, you know, stuff like that. So did the all-star thing, and you had three pretty competitive years while you were there, right? It was three was it three seasons or two? It was two. two yeah. Yeah. I mean, we were up 2-0 in the conference final against Toronto. <laughs> that was the year um, they won it. That was the year they won it. You know, we're up 15 in game three and losing overtime. And uh, I still get sick feeling, you know, thinking of, I thought we were going to win it. Like, I mm-hmm. really did. We had a heck of a team. My second year was, we were on pace to win like 74 games. And then COVID hit. Yeah. So that was the bubble year. And we lost to Miami, who ended up going to the finals. And yeah, lost to the Lakers. And then I had my son right before that we thought we planned it perfect my wife was due july 29th it's like summertime in the nba perfect because you're what an you awful know. oh did the bubble i forget because i mean i try to put that stuff as far back out of my memory as possible but did the playoffs get delayed so like everything went into july like you said when your son was born so everything got yeah. thrown up and you're stuck in the july, bubble july august yeah so oh, i actually august, I, yeah. I didn't go at first because my son was being born. So he's born. And then I ended up getting there right before the playoffs started. So they played like, I don't know if you remember, they played like 10 regular yeah. season games. Yeah. I missed those, which is fine. And then I made it for the playoffs. And I left. Thought I was going to be there for a while, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Uh, we lose in the second round. And then I went home. And like three weeks later, Coach Bud was like, hey, do you want to play golf? at Aaron Hills, like really nice course in Wisconsin. And we're playing golf. He's like, hey, listen, Giannis wants somebody to go over to Greece. He can get you in by like basically writing a letter, you know, to the government or whoever. Yeah, whoever it is. And they'll let you in. I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to have to talk to my wife. You know, like I've been with my son for like three total weeks. So I... So sorry about that. One of the players is supposed to come in here. Uh, sorry. So uh, no, no, it's, uh, it's all good. So basically, anyway, I go over there. Long story short, two weeks in Greece. Oh, you did go to Greece. I did end up going. Oh, yeah. Okay, I thought you were going to say no. That's you know that's when I I said no, and then you end up coaching the Bulls after the next season or whatever. So you did go. I did go. My wife was like, "Listen, you know, like yeah, it's whatever, but like you gotta go." Like, Giannis just won MVP. It's my job. It's you know, mm-hmm. Coach Bud was asking me, but really nudging me, and so I went for two weeks. Great, unbelievable experience working with him for two weeks, and. While I was there, Coach Donovan had reached out to Coach Budenholzer and asked if he could talk to me about moving to the bench and being an assistant here. And mm-hmm. I was there. And that's where I did my interviews. That's where I did everything. Was in Through Zoom. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. And then ended up here. That's awesome. Before I moved to Chicago, you obviously have a relationship with Giannis at this point. So the- Yeah. 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 He's the best. Yes. good dude awesome player you know so that just must be cool to be able to spe- say you spent time with Giannis in Greece never mind just the seasons that you coached him yeah, very cool thing yeah no it was a, like combination of like superstar person competitor like mm-hmm. he is he is off the charts and you know we don't talk like I don't talk basketball really with him but yeah. like you know his kids similar age as my son and you know it's uh, we'll talk about that all the time we'll talk yeah. pre-game sometimes like he's more yeah. or less like laser focused but a- yeah. yeah after the games we'll talk and you know we played them last year in the playoffs and after they beat us you know he comes right over to the bench and big hug and so he's yeah he's the best it's a weird thing to ask but there must have been on some level you 
being very happy and proud of the guys when Milwaukee went on to win the championship the year after you left. Oh, no <laughs> doubt. Like, this, just for the staff, the staff is like that Coach Bud had there. They're amazing. Mm-hmm. And, like, he connects the families, like, so well, and they work so hard. So just let alone the players, the staff, I was so happy. And, mm-hmm. you know, like – people always ask me like, Oh, do you regret leaving? Like I had a great time there and they, they helped prepare me for the job I have now. And just like, it's hard to get out of the video room. It's hard to get to the bench. Mm -hmm. And it's also hard to pass up a chance to work with, you know, hall of fame coach with Billy Donovan and the Chicago bulls. And as a kid, you know, as a kid, I was, this was my, so you're a big Michael Jordan guy. Huge. Yeah. Same here. It's, yeah, you know, it's the same Hard when you mentioned like cutting out stuff and I had like Wheaties boxes and little, you know, all kinds of Jordan stuff. So you have a chance to work for the Bulls. It's kind of opportunity you have to take a strong look at. Yeah, no question. Just everything, you know, it's just another opportunity to learn from a great coach. You move mm-hmm. to the front of the bench. It's like a different, again, it's like people look at you in a different light for your career. And then, you know, the, the organization was great. The president, GM coach are like pretty locked in together which is a huge deal yeah so it was it was great it's been great for me we were talking a little bit before but we're in the middle of the off season that's when i knew i wanted to reach out to you what's the off season been like once the season ends do you have a little bit of time off and then you kind of get back into things or you just kind of pick up the next day after you're out of the playoffs and and get rolling yeah you're just kind of like you know we obviously we missed the playoffs this year we have some exit meetings and then we're off for you know a couple weeks and then mm-hmm coach has us back and we start talking about you know rehashing the season what could we have done better as coaches Mm -hmm. we'll talk about each player like what's the plan for them for the summer Mm -hmm. how do we execute it and we look at the calendar and just start getting to work and then you know he trusts us like he'll give us things throughout the summer but he really trusts us like hey listen you know you're in charge of defense you're in charge of offense like go do what you gotta do and then He'll check in with us every once in a while, but he's just more around to support, throw ideas mm-hmm. around. And yeah, you're just kind of seeing players. You go visit players, you know, in wherever they live and somewhere here in Chicago and you work with them and try to help them get better and take them to dinner. And so, yeah, it's great. Building that relationship. And what's draft night like for you? I think everyone's in a room, you know, like mission control, figuring that out. Or is it different than that? <laughs> Yeah, it's like coaches aren't in there, the head coaches. I was in the draft room one time my first year in Oklahoma City because I was kind of like did some front office stuff. Mm -hmm. I was in there and my job was to basically answer the phone. There's like a phone, like a bat phone in there. You picture like the red phone. And I had to answer the phone, not the like main phone, but like this other phone. And then I had on the computer, I basically had who took who so like i would know 30 seconds before like you would know watching it yeah. on tv and i would announce it to the room and then they'd be like okay like this changes this 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 on the board and mm-hmm. it was wild it was really cool and like that experience for me like doing the front office stuff was great to see because you learn to see how they think mm-hmm. versus coaches think and you know your mindset how do you kind of think like both of them so it was mm-hmm. a great experience do you spend any time in Vegas for summer league? Yeah, I'll be there for like six days. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be there. Yeah. Just kind of, I'm not, not coaching it, but uh, Billy likes to meet. And, uh, you know, it's like a midsummer coaches retreat. We talk about everything and throw some ideas up there. And we're around, you know, supporting our guys that are coaching the summer league. And then, mm-hmm. you know, you see people from different teams. It's just like a big NBA circus. Yeah, I'm sure it's awesome. Yeah. What's different about coaching in the NBA that you maybe didn't realize when you got into it? Like you always thought it would be like one way, but is it is is it just different behind the scenes on a day-to-day basis than you thought? Yeah, like there's so much that goes into it. Like if you're getting ready to watch like the Celtics and, you know, they're playing Golden State in a regular season game, like what goes into that is incredible that from – the scouting to the shoot arounds to the you know, every little detail of preparation to get ready to play one team and to also like when you're doing that you're also thinking about your team's like daily habits like your offense and defensive systems like okay 
we have what we do and who we are, but also like how are we guarding Steph Curry tonight? How are we guarding Clay Thompson, Draymond Green? And like, then when you see Steph go out there and get 45, like it's amazing because you are locked into this guy for the entire game and for him to do what he does, it makes you really realize how good these guys are. And it also, as a coach, teaches you like, look, you're not shutting these guys down. You have to make it as hard as you can on them. And you got to be willing to live with something because every team scoring a hundred points basically mm-hmm. a night. So it's like, how do you want to give up those hundred? And I think as a fan, sometimes you don't realize that. And, you know, like what actually goes into all these little decisions that are being made, there's so much preparation and like, Hey, if it works, you're like, that's, that coach is amazing. Mm-hmm. And if it doesn't, they're still like, it's not on a whim. Like they're not just unprepared it's done for a reason. And then after the game, they're not going to tell you, well, like this guy ran the play wrong or whatever Mm -hmm. it might be. So there's just a lot of different things that kind of go into it that are really, really unique and interesting. And, uh, you know, it's all part of it. I bet. How hard is it to have a a family, young son as an NBA coach with the level of travel that you do? And uh, if you're still working long hours, is that tough? It's yeah, it's really tough. I think like, and I'm not just saying it like, you know, everybody could say it, but my wife is like, she's the, the, the superhero of the family yeah. and she works, you know, she has her career and it's part of what makes us work. You know, mm-hmm. she has her goals, her career, her dreams that she's going after. And I have mine. And at the same time, like we do a really, really good job of, you know, communicating and planning out, okay, like who's picking them up, who's doing this, who's feeling, okay, I'll do this tonight. You got that tomorrow night. I'm yeah. leaving for four days. And it's a lot. And I think, you know, you miss some things during the season, but uh, someday hopefully he'll understand. And, and when I am around, I just try to be, you know, the best dad I can. Absolutely. Very cool. Well, listen, man, I appreciate you taking the time to talk. No, uh, you get players knocking on your door, calling you up and you get a bunch of people that, <laughs> that want to talk to you, but I appreciate you sharing your story. Before I let you go, do you have any advice for people that want to improve their coaching? It's hard to say, oh, get into the NBA's coaching, but like, what do you give people for advice? I would ask you that. Yeah, I think like when it comes to coaching, like the one thing I've learned is how can you like be your authentic self and Mm -hmm. learn along the way? Like, I think there's so many things out there. There's so many videos and clinics and all these things to where you can learn. But I think the most important thing you have to figure out first is who am I? What's going to help me build relationships? What do I believe in? And how can I grow and build off of that Mm -hmm. rather than like trying to pull all this information and knowledge it's like that's great but how does it fit me and that's one thing I've learned and it's one thing I try to do it it doesn't mean it works for everybody but trying to be someone you're not like you know anyone can sniff that out and it's just not Mm going to work and and in order for someone to be coached they got to believe in you and I really Mm -hmm. think that when you're your authentic self and you know, you put in the work and the time into people then that's, that's the real coaching. Yeah. Especially at that level too. So, so thanks for sharing that. It's been fun watching your career up to this point. I'll definitely be watching it moving forward. Hopefully you get that head coaching job someday, but yeah, I'll definitely be pulling for you and the bulls this upcoming season when they're not playing the Celtics. So. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Hey, I don't, I don't blame you. So I, again, Randy, I appreciate you having me on man, And thanks for thinking of me and you know, it's, it's great talking to you and I'd love to do it again. So. Uh, awesome keep dude. in touch and anytime appreciate it man all right have a good one okay you too